Doctor Who, William Hartnell. All right, uh, next I will be talking about the special features associated with, with this. For the edge of destruction. Okay, on the disc for the edge of destruction. The special features are, there is one special feature titled Doctor Who Origins. Okay, I have a quote by Ver Verity Lambert. Verity Lambert, the producer of Doctor Who at this time, uh, from 1963 to 1965, when the, when the show first began. Okay, here's that quote from Verity. She said, I think Sidney Newman was brought in to be BBC head of drama to breathe some life into a drama department that had kind of sat on its laurels for quite a long time. And now I have a quote by Sidney Newman, the, the BBC head of drama at the time. He said, the BBC drama were still catering to a highly educated, cultured class rather than the mass audience, which was not aware of culture as such and had no real background. But above all, I felt that the dramas really weren't speaking about common everyday things. Okay, Sidney Newman joined the BBC as head of drama on December 12th, 1962. Okay, in a brainstorming session at BBC, Donald Wilson was credited with putting forward the idea that the series should contain a time machine. John Braben put forward the notion that the series should revolve around some sort of world body of scientific troubleshooters from the future. Three main characters were devised as suitable. A handsome young man, a handsome well-dressed heroine, aged about 30, and a mature man, 35 to 40, with some character twist. Sidney Newman vetoed the scientific troubleshooter idea. Sidney wanted a teenage girl character that would get into trouble and make mistakes. Okay, now I have a quote from Sidney Newman. He said, the idea of Doctor Who was a senile old man of 720 years who had escaped from a distant planet in a spaceship that had the capacity to go forward and backward in time. Okay, and here we go. Uh, then this happened. Something very irritating. The disc froze. The DVD froze at 20 minutes <coughs> of 50, 20 minutes of 50 minutes, and then it skipped to the end credits. I've been having this happen uh, the pa within the past year or so. I had it happen with this one recently. Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, uh, Solid State Society. I got about halfway through it, I think, and then it just froze up. I tried several times. Uh, the disc, it didn't look that bad when I looked at it. There looked like a little bit of imperfection on it, but 
it wasn't extreme imperfections on the on the back of the disc. <sighs> I feel like I take good care of my discs. I try not to touch the the back of it and uh, I don't leave it laying around anywhere. It just goes right in the case. But uh, it seems like they just deteriorate for the the life the lifespan of DVDs. They they're not they don't always uh, last as long as they should. I've had some that I've had for a very long time, much longer than this one, and they work fine. But this one, I think I've only had it for. I've had it for less than four years at least. I, I don't remember when I got it, maybe a year or two ago. And I've only watched, I've, I watched it once when I first got it. And then I think this was the second time I watched it. And it wouldn't work all the way through. As much as I paid for it, I don't remember how much, but it wasn't worth the price if you could only watch it once all the way through and then it doesn't work anymore. That's that's very irritating. Feels like a wait. I'm wasting my money buying all these DVDs if I can only watch them once all the way through, or or a couple times maybe. I've also had I also had one um, After Hours, uh, a DVD that I really a movie that I really liked, one of my favorite movies, uh, and that also froze up at, at, at one point in the in the movie but I watched that many times I had it for a long time uh, I got a lot of viewing pleasure out of it and very irritated about that that that's also not working right and then another movie that I like a lot that I've had for a long time uh, the the hand that one froze up too all right I like getting DVDs and Blu-rays, but it's very irritating when they just stop working. Okay, back to the special features for The Edge of Destruction. There is one titled Over the Edge. And in this, William Russell, who played Ian, I have a quote here by him. He said, I thought it was an extraordinary story, The Edge of Destruction, to come up with in that short time. It was extremely imaginative. It gave you little windows into your character and showed our characters in totally different ways. Okay, uh, the reason this Doctor Who story was set completely in the TARDIS was because the production didn't have any money at this time. Yeah. That's... I mentioned that a little bit previously. They didn't have any money at the time to film on other sets. Yeah, okay. Uh, then there is a special feature titled Inside the Spaceship. In this, uh, Brian Hodgson. I have a quote by Brian Hodgson, who was sound supervisor at the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. He said, I was asked to make the sound of the TARDIS take off. It hadn't got to be ordinary. It hadn't got to be an ordinary rocket. It had to be something quite different because the fabric of time <coughs> and space was being broken. And that sort of went in my head, and I thought of a ripping sound. We had an old piano in the radiophonic workshop. All the keys had been taken out, and I just had the iron frame with the strings on. I had a key. It was my mum's front door key, actually, and I scraped it along the bass strings. And then we started cutting them together and changing the speeds, and then we started putting feedback on, which is where you put echoes and repeats on it. Then we wanted some sort of 
sounds that suggested coming and going. And so I use the technique as putting feedback on the sound backwards and then on the sound forwards so that the things came towards you, the things came towards you and went away from you. That's another uh, great thing about Doctor Who, the sound of the TARDIS, that whooshing sound. I love it. There's so many great things about Doctor Who, and that's one of them. Okay, and next there is a special feature titled Masters of Sound. And I have a quote by Delia Derbyshire of the Radiophonic Workshop. She said, Ron Grainer, the composer of the Doctor Who theme, was so thrilled with the sound of the first mix that he said, give Delia half the royalties. I'm so pleased with it because I was going to book a band. Literally, he didn't think that what he'd written on his score could be so well done with the equipment we had. <clears throat> And he was a very generous person, but of course that wasn't allowed, as I was only a studio manager. I, uh, I had downloaded some uh, music by Delia Derbyshire. It was very good, very unusual. I had downloaded, that, downloaded it uh, many years ago, and I have it burned to a CD. All right. After 40 years, the BBC Radiophonic Workship, work, Workshop, let's start again. After 40 years, the BBC Radiophonic Workshop closed down in March 1998. Okay. Hmm. Next, we have Marco Polo. Okay, which is a 30-minute condensed version of the lost seven-part story. Marco Polo was the story right after The Edge of Destruction. The soundtrack, production stills, and telesnaps are what has survived for this special feature. Okay. And now we are entering Spoiler Town again for the last time. Four. Marco Polo. The condensed version of it. Okay. It starts with Susan, Ian, and Barbara examining a large footprint in the snow. Susan tells Barbara and Ian that they are at the Himalayas the roof of the world. The doctor exits the TARDIS and tells them that all the lights in the ship have gone out. A circuit had burnt out, and there's no water in the ship either, and no heat. A group of Mongols I got my new Oxford American Dictionary right here. Mongols, Mongols. <clears throat> uh, what was it? Oh, in the 13th century AD, the Mongol Empire under Genghis Khan extended across Central Asia from Manchuria in the east to European Russia in the west. Under Kublai Khan, China was conquered and the Mongol capital 
capital moved to Kanbalik, modern Beijing. The Mongol Empire collapsed after a series of defeats, culminating in the destruction of the Golden Horde by the Moscovites in 1380. Okay. I'm going to just stop right here.